I am Ala Goldner, Director of Technology, Strategy and Standardization in MDEX. And uh, two years ago, during ONS in Europe, I provided a session on SDO and open source partnership, uh, the joint value which is being developed in open source as a part, as an implementation of a different standards. Uh, and, and this session is an update of that session, what has changed uh, during the past two years, and specifically we zoom in on those things which have changed and which are relevant. So uh, uh, we would be talking on the open source side, mostly on those organizations, which uh, organizations ONAP, ONF, OpenV, and Ukraine, those organizations mostly involved and impacted and implementing a different standards. And on standardization side, it is a TMF forum doing all those open API on connecting with the external system, with BSS OSS system, free GPP, of course, developing all 5G related standards, also 5G network management standards, uh, ETSI, ETSI NFV, ETSI is the same, ETSI MSC. Uh, they, of course, are being implemented by open sources, which we can see here, and I've mentioned, and I'm going to explain what exactly is being done and what exactly was done during the past two years. And the new one, which actually I'm also going to cover is IATF as it has developed its process on developing transport network slicing and what we are doing in ONAP in order to uh, support that. Now, ORAN is very interesting one because ORAN sits on the intersection of open source and standardization with having was ORAN Alliance things done in free GPP and then actually implemented by different open sources, by ONF, by ORAN open source community, and by ONAP. And uh, this is what I'm also going to cover today. So uh, for the standard usage outline for ONAP, this is what I'm going to cover first. So at CNFV, of course, this is the key group of standards, you know, implementing all those IFA soul interfaces, intern connecting orchestration of the third party with orchestration of ONAP, interconnecting uh, with managers, all those standards have been have been updated, but no new standards have been implemented or produced in the last two years, except for some extensions for cloud native. So the affected components on ONAP side are SDC, SO. Uh, we see uh, the NFM adapters in SO, NFO adapters, external uh, API, and so on. OIS is TOSCO, of course, uh, the work has been continued, and the affected comp components are SDC, AI, DC. Same form, as I say, external API to the BSS system, and then SO, AI, DC components are uh, involved and implement those changes. On Etsy is the same, which is producing an end-to-end -end architecture for network slicing, uh, for the closed loop operation, the mostly impacted modules are XO and so adapters. Free GPP, that's the key for developing and implementing the network slicing, uh, architecture network slicing use cases, which is the key use case in ONAP. So they developed quite a few of the new standards for the past two years and ONAP network slicing use cases is fully following those. Uh, now on free GPP, again, slicing and uh, that has been extended quite a lot in release 17 and now in release 18. And what is being defined by free GPP actually by the same people who participate in ONAP activity is being implemented for network slicing use cases with SDC, APC, DC, uh, the most impacted entities. ITF, as I said, uh, is being defining is defining a transport net, transport network slicing for the transport part. So that has been implemented for the network slice use case in ONAP by SO, of course. Uh, Etsy OSM interworking that has been uh, defined for quite a lot of time and the affected components are SDC and NFSDK. The next one I'm going to cover is ORAN. 
And you know, the major body which is defining Oran standard, of course, is Oran Alliance. And Oran Alliance is working in a very close cooperation with Free GBP, of course. Uh, with ETSI is the same as ETSI is the same, defining the full end to end architecture while Oran is concentrating on Oran piece. ETSI and FV, of course, for all virtualization aspects. Uh, regarding on of interworking, there is quite a lot of work uh, being done on actually implementing a different um, interfaces. The key one is A1 interface and then non real time rig for the, some of the use cases, those have already been implemented and there are more pieces in, in, in work. I'm going to cover that as well. Uh, or two interface, which is currently being defined by Oran Alliance in process of defining, is also planned to be inter implemented very shortly. Uh, now for free GPP, the most uh, important and affected components are O1 interface and potentially also a1 interface. Now ONF, ONF has started uh, the implementation of actually near real-time rig and so uh, we yet to start but that definitely will be done. The integration and interfaces with ONF to towards the joint solution and the affected companies of components of course or a near real-time rig, E2, O1, and A1 interfaces. Now, Ukraine, uh, you know, the affected uh, SDO partners doesn't change that much. For the last two years, for ADCM, it's ADCMEC. Obviously, I would say this is the key. ADCMEC open APIs to be used by Ukraine and the affected companies, uh, micro MC uh, Ukraine architecture. ONAP, uh, that's the age deployment use case, Ukraine age being orchestrated by ONAP, also work is done in order to support it. And ORAN, of course, it's Radio Edge Cloud placed in run network functions on the edge. Um, that's, those are the major, that hasn't changed much, you know, the list hasn't changed much, but the implementation ORAN has been advanced quite well. Through the last two years, the same as on, um, and so you know, while implementing edge deployment by on actually with the leverage by leveraging of the, those standards, you know, the new ones, the extended ones have been used. Uh, now, regarding the NFV, SNFV scope related to the scope of ONAP, that hasn't changed that much. Still, you know, they have slightly different scopes with scope being a subset of ONAP scope. So here on this picture, we can basically see what is the subset of ETSI scope, you know, marked by yellow with red, which is being uh, implemented, the intersection sco scope, which is being implemented on by ONAP and ONAP scope includes OSS uh, features such as PNF orchestration, service and application configuration, and service application FCAPs. Uh, now, it's very important to see how ONAP interfaces with external management system by leveraging at different at CNFV interfaces, because in many cases, basically, you know, a service provider have an existing orchestration, existing VNF manager, which need to interconnect with ONAP. So for that, in that sense, you know, of course, the key interface is SOL5 interface, interconnection ONAP with legacy NFVO. There might be SOL3 interface connecting with VNF managers or many VNF manager. So for that, SOL1. Um, it is very important to uh, see how one of interfaces, the external network management system, because service provider may already have orchestration system, VNF manager system, legacy OSS system, and those actually are supported by ONAP by using those Etsy sole interfaces. And here, you know, I have an outline. So, for example, for uh, interfacing with external legacy NFVO, we use SOL5 interface for interfacing with VNF managers. Basically, SOL3 is being used uh, for interfacing with VNF, SOL3, SOL1, VNF descriptors are being used. Also, SOL2 interface can be used for the legacy OSS system interconnection. SOL5 is being used, and again, then SOL1 
uh, with defined NS descriptors uh, being used. So all those are implemented by ONAP, that's important so, uh, to mention. So basically for the deployments which have an existing orchestration system, ONAP provides a full set of the tools to actually to interconnect with those. Now I'm going to talk briefly about ONAP, ETSI, the same interworking. As I said, ETSI, the same is the key for the definition of end-to-end -end network service management. And you know, the key use case for 5G is network slicing, which leverage, leverages ETSIS at the same standards. There is a key network use case is implementation with the closed loop, basically while detection and correction of the issues is performed in closed loop without user intervention. And all those actually have been defined by ETSIS at the same, which has been done a lot of work for the last two years. So they're defining domain orchestration services, domain intelligence services, as I said, for closed loop operation, domain control services for each one of the domain to secure the state of each managed entity as well, not just end to end, but also how end to end zooms in into each one of the domains and domain assurance services, uh, which actually monitors the management entities and provides live performance and full data to support closed loop operation. So I would say that uh, those standards are extremely used and they're conceptual. They're conceptual in order to give a guidance to ONAP, to ORAN, uh, to ACRENA, even in order to implement that end-to-end -end service. So that might be connected, of course, to a different domain level and functionality of management might be implemented on the domain level as well. But ETSI is at the same, actually the key strength of ETSI is at the same, is to define how all those interconnected into the same solution. And so while implementing that network slicing use case, closed loop use case in ONOP, we are guided by ETSI at the same standard. Uh, regarding ONAP support, as I said, it is, you know, the key use case that is currently being implemented as end-to-end -end network slicing. It has uh, several domains. It has RAN management domain, core network management domain, NFV management domain for interconnection uh, between, uh, vir for virtualization, actually interconnection of a different domains. It might also have transport management domain not uh, mentioned it on this slide that as is the same um, uh, is also defining how transport is interfaced with RAN and with core uh, and how that whole end-to-end -end thing works. So uh, the interconnection, that fabric which works between those different domains is actually being implemented by on by leveraging as is the same. On the 3 GBP interworking, uh, that's again, you know, the key use case is network slicing and 3 GBP uh, SA5 is the, is the group which, is, which defines the slicing for RAN and for core, not for transport. Transport is being defined by ETA, IETA. So basically, uh, what is being done when we implement RAN and the system F, core and the system F, functionality and on a, the interfacing between those, you know, all the parameters which uh, for, of the slice, slice subnets, which are being provided, slice profile, a subnet profile, all those things are being done by uh, implementing the standards defined by SA5, actually in the very close collaboration with SA5 people. On the PITF interworking, as I said, uh, transport network slicing use case is being defined by IETF. Now, in the network, when we implement an end to end solution for mobile, uh, especially, you know, it has RAN, it has core, but it also has transport. So, implementing transport for the end to end solution, meaning getting all the measurements and combining them into holistic end to end picture and then actually providing parameters from the end-to-end -to, -end to transport is extremely important. And this is why ONAP actually is interfacing or implementing, you know, transport network configuration by actually using the definitions of IETF for transport network slicing. You can see here briefly 
how it works. So basically transport network conf configuration are provided here from the end-to-end -end solution, um, front hole, mid hole, back hole, you know, there might be several subnet inside of the transport. Of course, in case of foreign, then we have RUD, you see you, those are splits. So that is still in progress, not fully completed, uh, but some implementation of this already exists in ONAP and that was done even before actually, you know, the RFC of IITF is issued. So by the same people who are working with in IITF on actually building those definitions and uh, implementing them in, or in ONAP. Now, ORAN interworking uh, 3GBP and at CNFB, zoom in into that. Uh, architecture doesn't change much, but it has been extended a lot. You know, the interfaces, the O2 resource management interface based on at CNFB was really uh, in process of defining for the last two years. And, you know, the standards supposed to be issued in December, I believe, this year. Now, A1, O1 interfaces has been largely extended in ORAN Alliance in order to support uh, those O1 also in for GBP in order to support uh, the functionality and, you know, uh, has been part of it has been implemented by ORAN, part of it has been implemented by ONAP. And uh, of course, you know, as standards get more matured, you know, more implementation is getting into ONAP and ORAN. Uh, when ONAP and ORAN interworking for GPP, this is actually a new thing. Uh, this is a management data um, architecture, which was developed or is process of developing by for GPP. SA5, actually, um, so you may know about NWDAF, network data and analytic functions, which exist ever since FreeGPP release 15. And in addition to that, SA5 group of FreeGPP uh, has been developed management data analytics, which can be end-to-end, -end, can be in a different domains, and study have been concluded, and now they're in process of formal specification of standardization uh, in release 18. So this is the work which is ongoing. Now, if we zoom in into this and look how that interfaces and interacts with ORAN, then basically uh, on a SO might be implementing 3 GPP across the main MDAS consumer and then ORAN can be implemented cross-domain and as producer, and those would be interfacing. Then, of course, there might be also a producer of the information for MDAS in core domain and in RAN domain. Now, MDAS might also introduce, uh, interact with NWDAF for providing and getting uh, overall analytics, not just management data analytics, but analytics on subscribers and any other types analytics in order to assist the functionality. So this is the new thing which uh, um, was developed in standard to process of developing in standards recently. And, you know, you know, again, we are closely watching that as soon as standard is mature, then will be in place. Hopefully by the end of the, this year, beginning of the next year, you know, those implementation will also come into place for data analytics flow. Uh, now, or interworking on that is not a new thing that has been updated. So we can see here Oran uh, open source SMO environment with non real time rig, near real time rig. Uh, as I said, near real time rig might be implemented also by ONF, and that collaboration uh, will come in place as well. Now, uh, what is important here and what I show for the different interfaces, the status of the support as of now. So O2, as you can see, not yet supported in on open present, but hopefully it will once the standardization is completed, end of this year. Now, A1 RESTful interface is supported in on up today, O1, NetComp interface supported at ONAP today, 
Oban West, AMCM, PM uh, supported in ONAP today as well. And microservices for FCAPs, you can see that there as well as ML AI being a part of the SMO. Limited support in ONAP today will be extended as we, as we move forward, of course, because this is the use case which is considered very strategic by ONAP and by ORAN. Now, uh, on a based SMO non real time rig framework, work in progress. So, basically, non real time, you know, here we can see with a little bit of the zoom in specifically SMO and non real time rig uh, the way they should be and they're about to be implemented in on -up. So, ideally, you know, when we complete the implementation, non real time rig framework will support run and 10 communication from BSS, UI, or run and SSMF. Our apps, uh, LCM control of, uh, of a machine learning model, including control loops operation, and AI ML workflow for training and update of machine learning models, and of course, system integration with SMO framework. Um, yeah, so as I said previously, uh, the ONF activity to support near real time rig and applications related to it is quite a new one. So as it gets matured, we're also planning uh, to get uh, into integration of what is being done by ORAN, what is being done by ONAP, and what is being done by ON ONF. And here you can see uh, the split down of the architecture into uh, several X X for, uh, uh, for near real-time rig, ONUS rig implementation, and the split into OCU, or DU and ORU architectures and those modules which is currently being implemented by ONF. Again, this is a comparatively new activity and we are looking forward in order to integrate ONF and ORAN with uh, ONF outcomes. So uh, for conclusion, you know, uh, obviously networking standards and open source collaboration have a lot of the common ground for supporting the requirements of open standard based network. Uh, they must be working together because actually, you know, the best thing can, which can happen to the open source, to the standards is that there is an open source actually implemented to try to wait. And this is exactly what is happening right now, as I explained in ONAP, in ORAN in a crying in ONF, uh, without waiting a year for the implementation, you know, standards are being produced and right away being implemented and then even being corrected and updated as a result of that. Uh, that collaboration actually helps a lot also to feedback into standards and to, you know, make an update in the next release of the standards. Uh, based on what was implemented and how it works in open source, so really works in both direction. That contributes, of course, to faster adaptation of open source and standards by the market ecosystem. You know, interest both clearly on the vendor side and on the service provider side to make it work, to uh, test and to build those reference architecture, those implementations by open source in order to see how standards work, and of course, it's accelerate eventually service provider network transformation and service innovation. Uh, thank you very much. Um, in this presentation, uh, which you may get uh, after that, there will be a full description of all of the implementations of standards in open source and all of the interactions. So you could see also which was implemented not just for the last two years, which I mostly covered now, but in general, what exists and what collaboration exists between network standards and open source in general.